Well, we're over 29 weeks into the Biden administration. And who can we trust? Last week, we left off watching representatives fry up the military for getting their wires crossed with Biden on Afghanistan. Both generals admitted that they suggested leaving about 2,500 troops on the ground in Afghanistan and that it was not a good time to withdraw. While Biden says he was never aware. 2,500 was an appropriate number to remain and that if we went below that number, in fact, we would probably witness a collapse of the Afghan government and, uh, and the Afghan military. Back in the fall of 20, and it remained consistent throughout that uh, we should keep a steady state of 2,500 and it could bounce up to 3,500, maybe something like that. Uh, in order to move toward a negotiated, gated solution. So no one, no one told, your military advisors did not tell you, no, we should just keep 2,500 troops. It's been a stable situation for the last several years. We can do that. We can continue to do that. No, no one said that to me that I can recall. This shines a whole new light on leadership and proves to us that calling Biden a puppet may not be too far-fetched and that Biden is all for show, while someone else is really calling the shots. And this is not the only time. In a recent video, John Kerry spoke about the trilateral US, Australia, and UK submarine deal. France had been supplying diesel submarines for Australia for some time. And for the last two years, Australia has been trying to get out of that deal and upgrade to nuclear power and better technology. The US decided to join forces with the UK to start supplying those submarines to Australia releasing France of their obligation and cutting them out almost $70 billion. France said they were completely blindsided as they only found out two hours before the deal was announced to the public. I'm really angry. What worries me is the behavior of the Americans. How did you find out that the submarine contract had been scrapped? Like everybody, thanks to the Australian press, no call to me. The president was informed after the news broke into the medias. We, we, we had difficulty to realize because it was a full surprise. And they felt left out, betrayed, and felt the U.S. backstabbed them. And they canceled their party at the U.S. embassy where they would celebrate their French-U.S. relationship. Kerry said Biden once again had no idea that a pact with Australia would anger the French and was completely unaware that the deal was even made. President Biden asked me about it and I told him and expressed... Uh, you told Joe Biden that it was not the right... He asked me, he said, what's the situation? And I explained exactly, uh, he, was, he had not been aware of that. He literally, literally had not been aware. But when Jen Psaki was pressed about this, she said, now that's a lie. And Biden absolutely knew about the deal. Of course he knew about the French being displeased. John about Kerry Let me finish. Literally had not been Peter, aware. I would encourage you to ask John Kerry specifically about the context of his comments. The president and, John, and, and the former secretary are also good friends. Uh, he relies on his counsel, uh, and as he does as many members of his national security team. But that certainly is not what he was intending oh, to convey. Friend. Right, right. Clean it up, Jen. Henry Kissinger once said that it may be dangerous to be America's enemy, but to be America's friend is fatal. And I'm sure the French would agree with him right about now. But they are not the only ones that are feeling the effects of this deal, as China was also hit by the same stone and told Australia this means war and accused the U.S. of starting some shit. As China has expanded their military presence in the Pacific, this new partnership would assist Australia to combat that. China has been begging for a reason to launch their hypersonic missile. You know, the one that they launched in late August that circled the entire globe before missing their target by an inch. You know, the one that caught our military by surprise because they were caught up and making sure to call soldiers by their correct pronouns. You know the one that Biden's disarming envoy said it has no way of defending us from. Yeah, that missile. Homeland Security blasted Joe Biden, saying he needed to crack down on China and their threat to society. But Jen said, although concerned about China, Biden welcomes the stiff competition. Generally speaking, we've made clear our concern about the military capabilities that the PRC continues to pursue. 
uh, and we have been consistent in our approach with China. Uh, we welcome stiff competition, but do we not? We don't do not want that competition to veer into conflict, and that is certainly what we convey privately as well. Speaking of not defending us, the Senate has caved, as we knew they would, on raising the debt ceiling. After the Senate talked all that talk last week about not raising the limit, Republicans are not going to be a part of their massive uh, spending and tax spree. They decided to raise it by $480 billion to get us to December 3rd to prevent defaulting and a possible shutdown. Okay, but then what? Democrats said that they are sick of the back and forth with the Senate and have started talking about abolishing the debt limit completely. But what exactly would that look like? The debt limit is in place to regulate government spending. And since the government must pay new bills and old debts, as well as continue funding payroll and programs it started, we need money, which is why people want to lift the debt limit. But completely abolishing it altogether means that there is no cap or any regulations preventing the government from going on a spending spree altogether. I mean, did we forget about the trillion dollar American rescue plan? or the trillion dollar non-infrastructure infrastructure plan, no matter what they call free money, there is no such thing. Remember when I said we are somewhere between hyperinflation and a recession? Let's talk about the hyperinflation side of it because they gotta get the money from somewhere, right? So you know what that means, higher prices and heavy taxing. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the cost to breathe is higher than giraffe coochie. And starting at the beginning of the year, bank accounts and bank transactions such as cash apps, Zelles, and Venmos, and PayPals that receive $600 in a year will start receiving 1099s, which is included in their massive spending bills. And Biden's Build Back Better bill, extra funding will be spent on beefing up the IRS to monitor our money. Banks are starting to get calls from customers and they're reporting these calls. They're concerned about this tracking of, pay, of transactions that is greater than $600. Do you think that this pay for of, of giving the IRS more money to crack down on unpaid taxes is going to stay in the reconciliation yes. bill? And what do you say yes. to Americans yes. who are concerned yes. about that? Yes. They said it will no way add to the deficit and no family making under 400000 will pay a dime and that it is strictly to crack down on the wealthy tax evaders. So why is the transaction limit so low? And why the need to abolish the debt limit then? These are the types of spending that would continue to increase if there was no debt limit. These old geezers in office are going to be good and dead when it's time to really pay the piper. And who's going to inherit this debt? Oh, okay. One thing about the government, they're going to be in our business. I swear the devil is in the details. Just like in the details with the vaccine. Some employers were over the moon excited when the mandates came down allowing companies to lay off employees who haven't taken the shot. But employees have been fighting hard and standing up to these vaccine mandates, causing many employers to have to stand down. A federal judge blocked United Airlines from laying off their employees, but the order expires on October the 26th. And Southwest said that they will no longer push mandates and unpaid leave, after they had to cancel hundreds of flights because they were short staffed, even though they blamed it on the weather. But employees must find accommodations by December the 8th. And Delta lay low and played it safe and said they refused to pass down mandates, but increased their employees insurance premiums by $200 and still require mandatory testing. And an outburger said, we gonna mind our business and refuse to play the vaccine police. However, employees still lost their jobs as the business was closed by the city on October the 14th. And New York had to let their employees carry on and honor their healthcare workers' religious beliefs, despite their order being set to expire on October the 12th. Kyrie still refuses to get the jab and the NBA still refuses to let him suit up. 
But Brandon Goodwin spoke out about how the Vax ended his career when he started developing blood clots. And Jonathan Isaac said, this is no longer about health and called the media out for lying, specifically about Joe Rogan and Justin Horstewarmer as a COVID cure. Does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied, well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer. They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. There is still so much misinformation about the vaccine, and it's still too soon to tell if they are truly effective or cause more harm. And the fact that the science is misleading and our leaders are always lying is enough for there to still be vaccine hesitancy. They're, they're, you're okay. You're not going to... You're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Mm, mm, mm. See what I mean?